Welcome, welcome, welcome back to Hall of Fame College Football's Sooner Magic Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Watkins. And if you love college football, know you're in the right place. So before you forget, smash that red subscriber button, like our videos, and don't forget to ring the bell so you don't miss one moment of Hall of Fame College Football's Sooner Magic Podcast. Welcome to the show, everybody. Kyle Dupuis already in here. Thank you, Boomer from the Crawfish Land. He says, love me some crawfish, man. I love it. And Collins McDaniel, what's up, man? South Boomer Sooner from South Georgia. Collins says, heck yeah, man. That's what I'm talking about. Yup, 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 yup. Boomer Sooner. Welcome in, Legend Mike. Probably get you in here in just a few minutes there, Mike. Hold on just one second. So, yeah. Yeah, we're going to get into talking a little bit about that here in just a second there. Kyle, welcome into the show. Thank you guys for showing up. Got a lot to talk about as far as Oklahoma spring practice. There has been, you know, this is that time of year where you get a lot of a lot of hype, a lot of overreactions. You know, I know you guys probably watched the Sooner Surge guys. They were certainly overreacting last week, talking about the clips that they saw of freshmen beating the offensive linemen in certain drills and stuff like that. Um, yeah, we'll talk a little bit about that. Got some good information about AA, hey, man. I'm excited about the Tory Blaylock thing. The main thing that it, that it really did was just second straight year, best running back in Texas is going to be an o- Oklahoma kid. And he really, really trolled them whenever he made that decision too, didn't he? So that was good stuff. Uh, here, hold on just one second. I think I got something here. Horns down, motherfucker. <laughs> I don't know if y'all heard that or not, but that was funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. But uh, that was cool, Tory Bl- Blaylock. But what we're seeing a lot of out of these practices is, I mean, I think it's a common theme that you're getting a lot of wow from freshmen. Um, you know, you've heard a lot from guys like, obviously, Stone, Jackson, Nigel Smith, um, starting to hear some more stuff about, you know, more stuff about some of these guys. Obviously, everybody loves what they're seeing out of Deion Burks. He's not a freshman, but, um, you know, Reggie Powers, you know, has been killing it early on and then you know so it's just been <laughs> did you hear that <laughs> that was good cool yeah um but yeah you know cool stuff it, it and it's good to it kind of tells you what i what i was saying on the video the other day and i'm just going to kind of repeat that is that when you get first off i think that going into the sec particularly for a program like oklahoma who is always near the top of college football, going into the SEC is going to give you an immediate recruiting bump. That being said, the defensive side of the ball, you're going to get a big recruiting bump as well. These kids want to play in the SEC, plain and simple, because there's a larger number of those kids that play in the SEC get drafted year after year after year. Okay, They've had the, the lion's share of draft picks in the SEC from, you know, what, years now, you know, the last 15 years or so. So that's going to automatically bump you up. But I think it also kind of goes to show you that, you know, and the NIL, that it tells you that the NIL is doing its job, you know, right now. I know we're going to see a lot of probably changes to the way things work over the next few years. The the transfer portal is never going to go away, but you're attracting these kind of players that are going to, you know, that they want to play in the NFL and they want to play for defensive-minded coaches like Coach Venables, Coach Bates. They put a lot of guys in the the first round of the the draft at Clemson. They put a lot of guys in the first round of the draft when they were here at Oklahoma as well, or, you know, Coach Venables was here at Oklahoma. He was putting guys in there too, right? Um, Hey, what's up, guys? Good to see everybody in here. Dapo, you getting pounded by the storm, you said, huh? Man. Hey, Bishop Frank, good to see you, my man. Good to see you. Yes, sir. Big salute to you as well. Love to salute. But, um, yeah, I wanted to get into a couple of things uh, about, well, let's talk a little bit about one of the, 
I don't know how surprising it is to me because I've been I've been on this guy since last year, but Michael Hawkins. And I was if I was surprised about anything, it was the way that you heard Gabe Eichert gushing over him on his show on Sunday, which, you know, I mean, well, I'll just put up the I'll, let me put up that uh what he said. As impressed as I've ever been from a freshman quarterback this early into their first spring in Norman. And that includes Caleb Williams' freshman season. Guys, <laughs> that is pretty big time stuff from a guy that played in the NFL, played for played, you know, on a line in front of some pretty freaking good quarterbacks as well while he was here. Um, look, not the only person that's been saying it. You've even heard stuff from from my favorite guy, old Parker Thune, uh, you know, look, plain and simple is, and I've been saying this from a year ago, this is the kind of player that this is one of the, one of the reasons that that little thing with Barrett Salee on um, that SEC podcast was just laughable to me because he was basing his wild opinion about Missouri being in better shape and going to be better moving forward into the SEC as, as Oklahoma enters the SEC, that Missouri was going to be better with drink than what Venables was going to do. And his main reason was because are you going to be able to still bring in these Heisman-level quarterbacks? No, they're not going to want to come there. What? What does that even mean? It, it made zero sense when he was saying that. This is a guy that, uh, yes, and I'm not. Uh, first off, Jen, thank you for that statement right there. I was hoping you, that somebody was going to say that. I do have to remember he was going against the second string defense. But what I'm going to tell you is, is if you haven't already seen it, I'm I'm going to queue up some of his um, some of his highlights for that. What we saw from him in high school as well. He carried a team at Frisco Emerson that was in their fourth year as a program period to the semifinals. They lost to the eventual the eventual three straight state championship um south south of oak cliff and he didn't play bad talking about a guy who had 55 touchdowns he only had like five i think he had five turnovers total um you know listen i'm just going to tell you that this is the kind of player that and, and i'm not even saying that he's that that jackson's in trouble but one of the things that i did see that i really like seeing up here from kyle um, look, this is, it just could make Jackson Arnold play that much better, but we have heard that, you know, he's had his struggles at times. It is early, early in the, in the spring season in spring practice. He's got the entire summer and fall to get ready for this season. And I think a lot of Jackson, there's a reason the dude was a five-star, right? But what I was getting at is that what Barrett Salee was talking about was acting like that they're just they're just recruiting a bunch of chumps, and that's not the case at all. And here's the deal: if this guy is throwing it as well as he is, which we saw all of last year from him uh, playing in Texas, big time football, taking a team all the way to the semifinals, that you know he kind of carried him. You know, his dad played twelve years in the NFL. He the the thing that that was most when when Gabe was talking about it that was the thing that I noticed the most in watching I watched every playoff game that he had and I watched pretty much every stitch of film I could see on him. One of the things I really liked about him is not the fact that he can run a sub four five forty, right? It's the fact that he doesn't just take off whenever. A lot of times, like Gabe was talking about, these athletes they use that probably a little more often than you want them to, or they're quicker to get out of the pocket and run, right? That would be my thing. It's one of those things that you kind of have to think about. Some of these guys, what's up, Mars? Good to see you in here, chicken. Steven G, Mars, jams, chicken. Jen, I'm glad to see you in here as well. But look, the guy is the real deal. I think he's playing for second string right now too. I think that that's a, that's a solid thing to say. But, right, okay. The only thing I'm going to get at is this, is, you know, when, guy, when Gabe is saying things like, this guy 
including Caleb Williams, because we were calling for Caleb Williams. A lot of st- fans were calling for Caleb Williams right away, immediately. Right? From all the way back in the spring to early in the season. I mean, it didn't just it it didn't just start happening whenever it got to, you know, the Red River game and they were down 28-7. They'd been calling for him the entire time before that, too. And sometimes the the point the point is, is that sometimes you can look over your shoulder and that pressure makes you better. Sometimes, you know, what did what did Shadi say in here a couple of weeks ago? You know, pressure either makes diamonds or busts pipes. We're gonna find out. The only thing I would tell you is, is the hope is that I don't think that there's any right now any danger of having a guy like Michael Hawkins be the starter before the start of the season. I think it would take an injury to Jackson Arnold. But if you, you know, it could be the type of deal where an injury or if you play bad or some some reason, you know, where they had to get you out of the game, you may never see him again because Hawkins is that kind of player. You know, 55 touchdowns, less than five turnovers, I believe it was the entire last year. And he's not just going to leave the pocket all the time. He can throw it just as well as he runs the ball. This is just that good. Uh, that you copyrighted that there, Shoddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what he said. And if you noticed, if you've watched any of that kind of stuff, if you watched any of his film, that's exactly the truth. Now, he had games where he was able to run the ball a lot more, and I think he had that one game when he was at, um, I think he played at one of the Lubbock schools out there in Techland. And he had two, two rushing touchdowns that were, I think one was like 90-something yards and one was 80. And, I mean, he was gone, gone. And you saw it a lot all year. But he had a lot of, he had a lot of passing touchdowns as well. And he's not just, you know, he's not one of those players that is just getting out to go, you know, because you're Lamar Jackson's. Jalen Hurts, I think, was a lot better runner than he was a thrower. I think he's still a lot better runner than he's a thrower, right? That's just my feeling. Yeah. Hawkins, Casey, uh, Chicken says, Hawkins, what I thought Casey Thompson was going to be with his father's lineage. Yeah, listen, I think that, uh, I think, I think that that, what he's doing right now almost surely says that Casey, Probably not going to be your backup. He might be your emergency break glass come in quarterback if he's healthy enough. But I don't even know if that's the case at this point. Um, you know, just one of my deals. I, I, I have said this for a, a while now that I'd love to see. You know, I, I didn't really feel like Casey was necessary. Right. I just didn't. Because. I don't know that I don't know that at this point that Casey's even better than because we haven't gotten to see, you know, um, General Booty even, and he's listed as n- the number two quarterback still because they haven't really changed anything as far as that goes. But I think that I think that Hawkins is going to be the number two, and I don't know that you really needed. I don't know that you really needed Casey. I understand why he's there. I'm okay with it, but I would much rather see if if. Jackson goes down for longer than a week. I wouldn't want to see anybody but Hawkins. Trevor Knight, Baker, Mayfield situation. It could be. It could be. Sooner Cowboys, welcome in, welcome in, welcome in. Yes, and he does, man. He's got that. He's got big-time arm. He's fast. I don't know if he's quite as fast. I say that, but he might be as fast as, as K-1. Uh, Casey does bring in a lot of experience on that alone. Could help JFA mid game. Uh, I don't. De- I don't necessarily doubt that. I don't necessarily doubt that either. I think as long as he's healthy and and you know Casey's a competitor, I'll give him that. And he could throw a good ball. You know, uh, I'm going back and looking at once I knew that it was pretty much going to happen that he was coming. 
I went back and watched some of his film again and stuff. He could always throw it, man, you know. But I think he's going to be more of a quarterback coach too. Yeah. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Do you burn his year for two or three games? Um, look, the way that they're recruiting with the guy like they because they've got another one coming behind him and Kevin Sperry that everybody's super high on as well. Now he's not near as mobile as either Hawkins or Jackson, but um look, I don't know that you don't want to find ways to maybe get him involved in certain situations anyway, just because he's that kind of athlete. We're talking about a guy whose dad played in the NFL for over a decade, you know, over a decade. So we know that he comes from quite a lineage, right? Um, that's just kind of where I look at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I kind of think so too. I, I, yeah, and he kind of talked about it. You know, he he wanted to be back at Oklahoma. It was he was it was good for him and his family, and he wanted to be there. And that's fine, you know. Um, I could also understand why, you know. And he's a competitor that would want to compete for that position too to get an opportunity to play. But I I just feel like it's one of those things that do you burn his his year? Do you burn his year? Yeah, I think you do. I think you do, man, because it's an opportunity. If we're looking at a situation where you're trying to win now, and and I don't think that there's, first off, there's always a situation. It's always that situation in Oklahoma, Shawty. You want to win now. And with this defense being as solid as it looks right now, and, you know, the only, the only place to go is up. There's a lot to prove going into the, to the SEC. You've got the tougher schedule. Yeah, you want to win now. And I think that he's your best opportunity to win aside from Jackson. It may be, may be aside from Jackson. I think that Jackson is the man, though. I also think that, you know, there's a reason he was a five-star, you know, Gatorade National Player of the Year. He went to multiple state championship games in Texas 6A ball. I mean, he's got he's got the arm. He can make all the throws, and he can run as well. I just think that it's a situation where if you you definitely – and this is a great problem to have. This is a kid that's going to push on him. This is a kid that's going to push on him, and that's not a bad thing. I don't think it's a bad thing at all. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, hopefully you don't need them. I, absolutely. And I, and I think that, you know, I'm not one of those guys that thinks that you want to just – pull the plug on what you had already had planned. It takes a lot to see that kind of happen, you know, like what happened with a guy like, um, you know, you start going back to the Clemson days and stuff like when you start talking about, you know, having a guy that's the incumbent, he's starting, and then all of a sudden they let him, you know, go into the portal because, you know, they got a freshman that's that guy. But sometimes you could end up, in that kind of a situation. And so there it is. I would hope Casey goes in for that situation, depending on how important the game is. Mm. Yeah. I, I mean, well, I mean what it, okay. So let's, this is assuming if we have a playoff shot now, think about this for a second, Kyle. I think that a nine and three Oklahoma team gets into the playoff with the schedule that they're playing. You're playing Alabama, Texas. Everybody's in love with Mizzou. Everybody's in love with Ole Miss and then LSU on the road as well. I think a nine and three probably gets you in. So unless you've already, and, and if they've already lost three games by the time something like this was to happen, then chances are, you know, it, it, depending on what it is, but you may already be seeing a guy like Hawkins in there, somebody else at quarterback. If he, if it's because they're not playing well, this I believe that they're trying to go now. Mm -hmm. Well, what? Uh, 
you know the radical OU fans are going to be crazy if Arnold isn't what Williams was for the Texas game. Well, the hope is, the hope is, is that I, I, don't, I think that he is, though. I, and that's the other thing. It's, I'm not even doubting Jackson Arnold here. I'm just telling you that this is a situation. This guy, this could be the kind of athlete, though, that if he ever gets into the game, you may never get him out. You may never get him out. And this is the situation that you find yourself in in college football these days, right? Guys lose their job to injuries. And they can lose their job to bad play pretty quick, too. We've seen it. We've seen it in Oklahoma recently, right? And to freshmen. It happens. Now, again, what I was really wanting to outline was just how crazy I think it is that people have pretty much already dismissing Brent Venables for what they aren't going to be and who they're not going to be able to get. I also had a guy that's been in my in the comments on my YouTube videos for the past few days saying stupid stuff about like, you know, at what point are they going to start recruiting better receivers? What? You know, we haven't had a top 10 receiver or we've only had one in the last three years or blah, blah, blah. What are you even talking about? And mess up. <laughs> Here we go. I don't know why PG's worried about Mizzou either. I'm not either. <laughs> PG. Yeah, I was busting your chops earlier, brother. Thanks for coming in, though. Thanks for coming in. Now, look, and in fact, I'll uh, I'll welcome both of you guys in here if you guys want to jump in um, real quick. PG, I'll send it to you as well. You guys jump in real quick. Uh, Sooner Legend, that's in there. And PG, let me find you, PG. You want to jump on? You're welcome to come in there, PG. Let's talk. I'll bust your stuff. Everybody thought. I was calling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're bonkers on that one. Yeah. Um. Do you have to make the playoffs? This is a good question. Do you have to make the playoffs in order for the off for the season to be seen as an improvement? Since y'all was knocking on the door last year. I don't know that you have to make the playoff. I think you need to win. I think you need to win nine for it to be considered an improvement. Um, because, you know, going into a, a situation where playing. Um, going into a situation where you're playing those guys. What? Whoop, hold on just a second there. Sooner legend. What's up, man? How you doing, Jason? Good. What's up, my brother? I knew Not I was going to get in here talking about this one. What do you think about oh. the about the question at hand, Michael Hawkins, and and where it could? I mean, look, I, I'm to me, I'm I'm glad that he's good enough to push Jackson. Is the main thing that I'm yeah. trying to get. At, I think more than anything, but I also think that he might be good enough to where. If you go out with an injury or anything else, you may never you may never get back into the game. What do you just, think? Just just seeing from what I saw out of Hawk when he was in high school, uh, especially last year, yeah, he's ready for the big stage. And Jason, you and I, you and I have even discussed this on telephone conversations. Mm -hmm. God, I don't I don't want nothing happen to Jackson Arnold, but if it does, and Hawk comes in. Hawk is going to have a hard time get getting that, or Jay Jackson's going to have a hard time getting that spot back from Hawk. It's Hello possible. again, PG. What's going on, guys? What's up there, PG? Welcome to PG, the show. PG, I was just, I, I was kidding with you, brother. <laughs> I got to come in here because listen, listen, I'm the only one that called Missouri to win like nine or ten games last year. When I said that <laughs> on Ty's stream, everybody thought I had lost my damn mind, and I was like, 
they had a they had a schedule to do it with, and they got a schedule to do it with again. Except, exactly the point. Except, look, to win ten, that means that they got to beat they got to beat Oklahoma and and Alabama, or the, or they got to win their bowl game. That's I mean that's that's a possibility. Okay, we're talking about in the regular season, man. Come on. Okay, well then they only won nine games in the regular season. No, they won. They won eleven. They, wait, so wait, they won eleven games this year. They, they were, yeah, they won eleven games. But oh shit! But here's the thing: the best games that they had, the, or the best wins that they had, were Kansas State and a third string quarterback Ohio State team. And it took it took a sixty plus yarder at the gun to beat K State at home. So and we and mm-hmm. K State wasn't what they normally were. They didn't look very good last year, you know. I mean, at the end of the day, though, and I, I can't remember, I can't remember who I was talking about this with earlier. But I mean, you win those close games early, you learn more about your team, you learn how they can fight through adversity, and I think Missouri figured that out. And at the end of the day, it's all about Why winning ballgames. So in love with those guys and drink, dude. Come on. I'm not in love with them. I'm just saying people just I, I get it. Drink's an easy person to make fun of. I get it. At the end of the day, though, you can't overlook Missouri and just think they're gonna be a cakewalk. Like there is a chance Missouri's gonna be a good team next year. What's up, JJ? Welcome to the show, sir. Up, and y'all caught me hey. in the middle of my uh Super Mario Wonder time, so Talking I might or might not be playing that while we <laughs> talk. <laughs> subscribers. Hey, well, hey, congratulations on the thousand subs there, JJ. Talking college football with JJ Kitchen hit their number 1,000 subs this uh, past couple of days. So we're excited for you, man. Nice. It's only up from there. Now the algorithm will do a little man. bit more. That's right. So what are your thoughts about what, what people are saying about Michael Hawkins there, PG? <laughs> People are saying Michael Hawkins can beat out old uh, Jackson Arnold. Is that what they're saying? Not necessarily that, but what, I mean, first person I heard talking about it was Gabe Eichert, and he was gushing. I mean, gushing about the dude. Mm-hmm. Said that he, he looked better at this time than anybody that he's seen at Oklahoma, including Caleb Williams. Okay, I don't know what Gabe Eichert was smoking, but I need some of whatever he was smoking because Caleb Williams was a generational talent. Have I don't think Michael Hawkins Michael is Hawkins? That. I don't have think Michael Hawkins. Michael Hawkins? I have. And I don't think he's Caleb Williams. I'm just going to be straight up honest. Caleb Williams was... Mm-mm-mm. And if I'm going to be honest. If Caleb Williams was at Oklahoma and he didn't leave to go to USC... There's a chance OU probably wins a national championship. That's the kind of player Caleb Williams is. I don't think Michael Hawkins is making that big of a difference. Not with that freaking defense, they weren't. And I'm talking about if at Oklahoma, if he would not have left Oklahoma to go to USC, they weren't going probably wins a national team. championship. Last year, here. maybe, 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 but I don't know. I don't know. The, uh, maybe it's possible because Caleb Williams by they himself. Yeah, well, they would have beaten Oklahoma, Oklahoma and USC. The time they wouldn't. Have, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think they could have. But I'm going to tell you that I think that Michael Hawkins is that kind of guy, too. I need and, to see it. Look, I need to see dad, it. His dad field. was over a decade in the NFL. This kid is an athlete. He's got this, the speed. He can throw it. He can throw it as well as anything that I've seen come out of Jackson Arnold, too. I'm just saying I wouldn't be that surprised. And he even said that he's not seeing him get out of the pocket too early. When he does, he's he's – very fast, but he loved – he was talking as much about his throwing as he was anything else. Yeah, I'm sure he's got a good arm, but, I mean, at the end of the day, I don't think he's being going to beat out Jackson Arnold because here's the deal. Just like we saw that, with Caleb not, Williams. I don't think that that's what he said either. I think that uh, the question that I'm having is, say he, you know, say he gets hurt in a game. Mm-hmm. He might be good enough to ne- to never give up the spot once he gets in. I don't think that's going to happen. And, and, I, and I only point yeah, to give you. Give me a reason. At, don't just say that. Give look, me at, a look at Caleb Williams when he was at Oklahoma as a true freshman. Yeah. He struggled against good defenses. True freshmen struggle. Look at guys across the country. It happens all the time. Hold on. Look at Dante Moore Hold last on. year. Hold on. <laughs> he struggled. The games that he struggled in, they – Lincoln got exposed against freaking Baylor. 
And I I don't care. I'm going to say this forever. Lincoln threw the damn game to Oklahoma State. Running the same I, I freaking agree with play you. over I, and over again. I agree with you. And he also, look, I don't think that he, his head wasn't in it. Thought, look, think about this. The year before, how quick was the trigger to pull, to pull, um, Spencer out of the game in the Red River when they when they got behind and they, they weren't even that far behind. He waits till they're down twenty eight seven this this time around. That's how good Caleb was. Now, I'm not I'm not the best thing to have happen is Jackson Arnold does well, but there's nothing wrong with a guy that can push you to get better. I just I don't see it. I I Jackson Arnold. I think is a way better arm than Michael Hawkins. He definitely has the better deep ball. Michael Hawkins is going to have more mobility than right. Jackson Arnold. But I mean, I just, I am not a fan of starting true freshman at your quarterback. Position. Sometimes they could. And I think that he was definitely underrated too, by the way. I just think he's, an he underrated. was underrated, but to compare him and say he's better than Caleb Williams, or he's on the same level as Caleb Williams. I, I don't, there were uh, there wasn't any quarterback last year that was. You're better. just gonna quickly. You're just gonna completely dismiss Gay Biker, who we haven't even seen. Played yes, in the NFL yes, and we has seen, seen a lot Michael of quarterbacks. Hawkins play. We have not seen Michael Hawkins play a college football game yet. No, we haven't. And I've seen. And he's been playing years of Caleb two, Williams. So let's 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 make it. I mean, let's be obvious. Let's be clear about it. It's not exactly the same as running against these guys that are running number one right now either. I understand that. I'm just telling you, this is the guy that has the kind of tools that he gets in. You may never get him out of there. We'll have to see. I, I don't see it. And in, in the SEC, how, they're going to eat him alive as a true freshman. I, I don't understand why you even say that. Everybody, everything that everybody's saying about the kid right now is that he it's the moment isn't too big for him right now. And he's going up against an improved second team defense too. Practice. It's practice. It's I don't practice. care. I'm telling you what I saw from him. He carried a team that wouldn't have got into the playoffs at all if it wasn't for him in Texas big time football. He gave South Oak Cliff all they wanted. All they wanted last year. They've won three in a row. This kid is another level of player. He's a much better player than people have given him credit for. Much I mean, better. I think he's a very good player. I and and Put Calvin him on the Cooper, same level he's not wrong Williams either. Right Jay now is, hasn't done nothing yet. He hasn't to, done nothing yet either. To put him on the same level as Caleb Williams right now, I. I, I you I, keep I, going back to Caleb Williams. I'm talking about Jackson Arnold. Who's the quarterback right now? Because you said he's better than Caleb Williams. I he might be better, he than better than Caleb Williams. I did not say he was better than Caleb Williams. You know who did? Your boy Gabe. Hey, Gabe ain't my boy. We Gabe and I ain't never talk. He ain't my boy. Bro, you need to behave I, I, yourself. I'm telling you, I'm okay. telling you, I I don't agree with this. I, I, I think this I, I, Jackson Arnold, I, people are so quick to jump off the Jackson Arnold. I'm not jumping off the Jackson Arnold train at all. I'm not saying you. <laughs> First I'm and saying foremost, I'm not even really doing quick that. to do this. And I, 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 I'm not able. Yeah, I'm, I don't think that, I don't think that that's what, what anybody and I don't even think that that's what Gabe was doing. In fact, I know that's not what Gabe was doing at all. He was just saying I was, that I was he's seen him. more out of this early. It just what the what the the quote said this early on. This is the best he's seen a quarterback, and as polished as he's seen. He said he went in expecting him to make a bunch of mistakes, like we were seeing. You know, um, what's the name? The other freshman, Zerberg. Was making more mistakes, and he yeah, he, he hadn't seen project. him make a single one. Yeah, I, I think the also I mean, a nobody expected him to come guy. in. And... No, he didn't expect anything out of out of Michael Hawkins either, though. Is what he I was think saying. Michael Hawkins was expected to come in and go. If you need him to win one or two games, he can do it. But like for to, to say, if Jackson Arnold goes down, he might never give the job back. I think that's a little bit of a stretch. I mean. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I what, think what I meant was, like I said, uh, what I said was, if Jackson Arnold goes down, Mike Hawkins is that type that if he has to start one, two, maybe three games, it would be hard 
for Jack Jackson to get that job back. Now, well, is it going to happen? Probably not. And I, I, I'm I'm high on Jackson. Have been since the young man was at Bitten Geyer, and I. I just hope he comes out and I mean just slings that ball all, all over the freaking park this coming year. I uh, I think he's gonna be great. Hey, I, th- I think that Jackson's I think Jackson is another one of those guys that's possibility to be a number one pick kind of guy. He is that guy. <clears throat> he can run also. Hey, Jason. He's not gonna run like Hawkins. What it yeah. Shot Shotty has a question. Does Jackson Arnold yeah, elevate it. players Did around? Yeah, I think he does. I think that yeah, uh, the, yeah. I don't think that. The, I mean, he's elevated. Play the guy who played in two six A Texas state championship games. It is that didn't he he national player of the year. National player of the year. One elite eleven. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna do that. I, I think that I think that you have the guy that you need right now. But I think that it's also a good thing to have a guy like Michael Hawkins. That first of all, if there is an injury, he can come in and get it done. And second of all, pushes, you know, for playing time early on. That's his job is to compete, is it not? I'm, and this, I'm glad. Always, I, I'll take you said always the wild. Hold on, I'm, I want to go to what this guy said. Old Tyler Walker, always a wild take. Who's always got a wild take? Four practices in, he looked better. Okay. I mean, I don't even know what you're saying to that. Nobody's saying. I think more than likely he is. Unless he, unless he doesn't perform, mm-hmm. maybe. And they're not winning. I don't think that the only way that you could see another another quarterback is if, is if there was an injury. Now, I think that that's the most likely scenario. But there's other, there's other mm-hmm. things that could happen, man. If Jackson Arnold I, doesn't succeed... Uh, Oklahoma is going to be a laughing stock. I'm just going to put that out there. Oh, social media is going to have way too much fun with that. that. PG, that's a lot to say that because the, this is a kid that kid that has just as much arm and he can run. So he's bringing more to the table than just your average quarterback. No, the no, no. I'm just that saying can, they can literally put the game on his back and run the football. Is it isn't necessary? That doesn't mean that they're going to be a laughing stock. It doesn't. No, I'm just saying if. Jackson Arnold actually flops. Like people are going to have way too much fun with that on social. Media. If he were to flop, if he were to flop, then then you definitely need to put somebody else in. And who better to have than a guy that is mobile and can throw it as well? So You've what got is a it receiver room that's deep? Is it, it's the deepest in one in the country probably? You've well, got a running back room that's got a lot of depth in there. We okay. need to see what they do. But, you know, some one of the things I was going to say, I actually liked your take what you were talking about that you think that the offensive line could be the strength of this team because of the fact that, first off, there's not a ton expected of them. You know, and number two, they got to go up against a nasty D-line day after day after day. Well, I just expect a lot of those second-year guys to take a big step. I, Jake Taylor, if he's healthy, I think – He's a good rotational piece. Um, same thing for Logan Howland. I'm really excited to see him. A lot of upside. But uh, to this guy's point in the chat about Rattler, Rattler yeah, flopped yeah. because of Lincoln Riley. I hate to say it. Rattler was Probably. going to be a lot better than – I think Rattler's going to get to the NFL. He's going to sit behind a really decent quarterback. And in two or three years, we're looking at Spencer Rattler and being like, how was he not that in college? Lincoln – He's did. got a lot of growing up to do, bro. Got a Lincoln lot did, of growing up. Lincoln to do. did Rattler a lot of disservice. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, Lincoln did Caleb Williams a lot of disservice too. <laughs> I think he um, did. But no, I mean, I I I, I, just, agree. I, I, I don't I listen, guys. First and foremost, all you folks in the chat, I'm not saying that I want to see Hawkins and not JFA right now. That's not what I'm saying. I'm telling you that I mean, look, we're getting rave yeah, reviews yeah. out of practices from the guys that are there watching it. That's it. We're just doing so, the shit. That we're we're just doing a what if scenario. Yeah, look. Yeah. If Jackson Arnold has a bad year, does OU go look for a new OC? 
No, I don't think that's the case. I think you have to look at why did Jackson Arnold have a bad year because he had a bad game against Arizona because he had a makeshift offensive line. And I mean, let's be honest, you know, it was not a good thing. It was about the line. I think they were fine. I think that he made mistakes that freshmen make. Well, yes, but his timing was terrible. The but makeshift offensive think that, line and not having that chemistry, that was that I also, it was, I also think that they were taking shots with him to see, you know, you're what are you gonna hold back for in that situation? You gotta have some stuff to coach up. And they were they weren't averse to taking shots. He was when your timing's off and you got a good secondary, you're gonna get picked off. You know, uh-huh. he some of the throws he made, you know, they were what they were. But he also made some throws that you never saw Dylan make. That 60 million right. yard Brandon Thompson pass. Chicken, chicken, what are you getting at? Because I saw everything and I'm not down on Arnold after the Arizona game. I never yeah. was either. I'm just saying a lot of that Arizona game, and I look at what I'm saying is if we're looking at a new OC, you have to look at the situation. Did Arnold have a bad season because he was sacked 30 times or 35 times and he couldn't get any protection? Uh, did Jackson Arnold not have a good season because his wide receivers couldn't catch the ball to save their life, right? Or did Jackson Arnold have a bad season because, well, he, he couldn't get it done? Like, it depends on what. Yeah, of course. I don't, but I don't think it's necessarily, I mean, you, I don't think you immediately, first off, I'm not going to predict that Jackson Arnold's going to have a bad season because I don't think – I think it's going to be hard for you to have a bad season. If you have a bad season, it feels like to me it's maybe you're just not ready because you got, like I said, probably the deepest receiver room in the country because the, there's – all those mm-hmm. guys could could start probably in any other program in the country. And there's a bunch of them in there. So you're probably going to lose some of those guys, but I'm just saying you've got great receivers. You've, you've turned the tight end room into – probably a a strength of your team instead of, you know, but it was non-existent last year, man. I'm star, poor Stog man being held together by freaking duct tape and, and hope, you know, I, I told, uh, I think it was, I was talking to you earlier. I said, Jackson or, um, uh, Dawson Stogner going to South Carolina killed his career. He should have stayed in Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But because he yeah. left and came back, I think that killed his career. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I don't know. I, I think Jackson Arnold's gonna have a great season. I think he ends think he up anywhere throwing between I think thirty to thirty-five he touchdowns get hurt or something like that. Unless there was an injury or or you know, I don't, I don't, I don't really know how you're gonna have a terrible season offensively unless you. Yeah, just, I think he's gonna have 30, 35 passing touchdowns. He'll probably throw about ten interceptions, and he'll probably run for about five touchdowns. I, I think that's what he'll do about next season. Yeah, he could. I, uh, I mean, what did what did Dylan what did Dylan have like six rushing touchdowns last year, something uh, like that? I think he had more than that. Hold on, let me pull it up. Okay, so uh, I think that he, he could possibly do a little better rushing Dylan the ball. Gabriel had three thousand six hundred and sixty yards, right. uh, thirty touchdowns, six interceptions. Jackson Arnold ain't having six interceptions, um, and then he ran for twelve touchdowns. <laughs> Yeah, twelve. Yeah, yeah. see, I, I I could see Jackson doing, having that kind of a season too. You think he can have twelve? Yeah. Listen, I think he's I think he's gonna end up being one of the be- if he stays upright. I think he's one of the better SEC quarterbacks day one. I just do. Well, I think definitely the situations he was put in last year, having to win that BYU game and then having to play the Arizona game, definitely helps him a little bit. Where Absolutely. I think like a guy like Nico. I, 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 we don't know really what he's going to be. Well, he looked really good against Iowa, but I mean, he got to play in the ball game too. He looked good. I think Nico's good. I, I also think Nico's good. I think Nico's I good. Think but I think I have more questions the in that in that conference right now. I, just I think don't. I have more questions about what Nico can do at the quarterback position with what Tennessee has as weapons for him versus Jackson Arnold. Like, you know, he's going to have a good offensive line because when was the last time Bill Beatonbow didn't have a good offensive line? And you know, he's got all these weapons around him to throw to and weapons in the backfield to hand it off to. Like, it, I think it's more set up for Arnold to have a successful season than Nico. I think well, Nico really breaks out in his junior year. I think we're going to find out what Nico. I think. Well, I think that they're pretty good, but I they've we're gonna wait and see what with Josh. I know the one thing that that surprised me about Josh last year was that he took 
I mean, this dudes he's a freaking Mike Leach air raid dude, and they ran the shit out of the ball. They had to, but they did. And so knowing that he's willing to kind of make some changes, you know, it is what it is. But look, guys, I'm, again, I'm just wanting to say this. As far as the, the Jackson Arnold stuff goes, nobody here is saying that he's not going to be the man. What we're saying is, is that they got two two guys that can be the man. That's what that's where I'm at with it. it and you know, I'm gonna listen to what Gabe Eichert has to say. And even, you know, hey, hey PG, even your boy, even your boy uh Parker was saying he's great. Parker ain't my boy. Parker ain't my boy. <laughs> <laughs> I know he's not. That was facetious. He's not my boy either. <laughs> listen, listen. Uh, he's he's a, he's a good dude. You know, he's a good dude. We just don't see eye to eye on some things. It's it's okay though. It's okay. I I, I just I don't agree with Gabe. I don't I don't agree with Gabe on that. I think that's look. Insane. But you haven't seen him. You haven't seen him in a full practice either. I okay, I'll I'll get to see him in the spring game. I bet, and I guarantee you, he ain't gonna look like Caleb Williams did in the spring game because Caleb Williams in that spring game, we all walked away. I remember walking away and talking to people during that spring game, and I mean, people were like, people said, people literally were talking about how oh, he could take Spencer Rattler's job. That's how good Caleb Williams was in the spring. Mm -hmm. It was that. It was that. I don't think Michael Hawkins is gonna be that guy. I do. I, I think he is going to be that guy. And I also think that he seems to be more mentally stable than what we're seeing Caleb Williams. If you want to start talking about Caleb Williams right now, I don't know what I think about his ass at all right now. Okay, listen, Michael Hawkins definitely ain't going to be painting his fingernails. Listen, do I agree with the way Caleb Williams I don't care about that himself? so much. It's, no. the, it's just the the constant, this this attitude that he seems to have of, uh, his whole approach to this draft thing is weird to me. I kind of wonder, though, how much of that is actually really true. Like, I mean, I mean uh, uh, there's how much of it's really true. Well, I saw him in the I saw him in the stands doing his little dance with his pink phone and his and his pink you know lipstick gloss on or whatever. <laughs> I saw him on GQ wearing a dress and I saw him crying in his mother's arms like bawling like a baby during the season when they lost to Washington too. Look, yeah. there's you know what he was telling her? He was telling her should have stayed wonder. in Oklahoma. There's things you got to kind of wonder. <laughs> there's things you got to kind of wonder about this guy. Yeah, they probably should he probably was saying that. Yeah, that's what he was saying, guys. He was saying he should stay at Oklahoma. I don't blame him for crying. I'd be crying too going to play for Lincoln Riley and Lincoln Riley's. There's just a career. lot of things that are going on with this kid that seems to be a little out of whack. And and part of it had to do with Lincoln and the way that he did things. Look, if he'd have ran, they had the best running back probably in the in the country last year, and he got 10 carries a game because Lincoln went away from what he does well. That's why they freaking only won seven. You know, it, it it's wild for me. They only won seven because of that trash ass defense. They should have only won six. Wasn't well, just because like Colorado of couldn't pull out one last because, because of that. Five. It wasn't just hey, look, and if it wasn't for look, if it wasn't for a missed two point conversion, they would go six and zero to zero and six to finish the year. So something's just weird, but I'm telling you that I, I don't think that. By the time all is said and done, I think Michael Hawkins is going to be a Heisman level first round number one pick type I mean, of guy. Maybe, I, I do mean, believe maybe we'll that he is. First, or maybe we'll have two first round picks and two Heisman quarterbacks back to back again. Wouldn't that be sweet? Wouldn't be. A, would it be a huge surprise? And you know, Barrett Salee over there talking. I don't know. To the, to the, the entire about, college football about, media, it might be a surprise. Well, that's what I'm saying. It, we're talking about like what Barrett Salee said on on the SEC podcast talking about that Mizzou was going to be better going forward because Oklahoma is not going to be able to recruit the kind of quarterbacks that Lincoln used to. Lincoln yeah. freaking won seven games with the Heisman winner last year. What are we even talking about? And they got Jackson, and they did. I mean, they're identifying guys. Kevin Sperry's underrated too. Kevin Sperry's going to be good. Underrated. And yeah. all of a sudden they're not here's the question. Come here's on. the question. Let's say Jackson Arnold wins a Heisman first round pick. You have Michael yeah. Hawkins and Kevin Sperry in that room. 
And let's say Kevin Sperry lives up to the potential we think he lives up to. Who are you taking? What do you mean? Who are you taking? Michael Hawkins, who let's Hawkins. say is really, Hawkins really is, good. Hawkins has, Hawkins has more in his bag of tricks than what Kevin has. I love Kevin's arm. I think he, I think he's, a, I think he's going to be a hell of a player, but he's done. He didn't have all the tools in his tool bag that Michael Hawkins has. He doesn't. He's not that athlete. Okay. I hear um, Kevin's brother. But I like Kevin Sperry. I think he's going to be great. I think he's going to be I hear Kevin's oh, yeah. brother in 2027 is going to be, yeah. His brother? Mm -hmm. he's I hear he's gonna as well. Good. I hear he's going to be real good. Nice. 2027. Look, there you, well, that's uh, the point I was making. I'm not saying who's better or who's not and, and who's going to. You're probably going to lose a quarterback here and there. Just you like know, you about to probably lose somebody else too. We don't know. But you're you gonna lose some quarterbacks, you're gonna lose some players. It is what it is. But in the end, I believe that now there it's is not one player that Oklahoma I... wasn't it, offense didn't live and die with Lincoln Riley. You know, they they played better offense, they played good offense before he got there. I know who was it last year? They had year? great quarterbacks, they had Heisman quarterbacks. Before he got there, two of them. Who was it last year? Was it? I think it was last year. It was like Gus Johnson or somebody said, "Don't tell Lincoln Riley that Lebby's offense is faster than his." That Oklahoma was running just as fast as an offense or faster than Lincoln Riley's. <laughs> yeah, as far as the tempo was concerned, mm -hmm. it, it yeah. The oh, only yeah. problem, the only problem with Levy to me is that I just think that he didn't. There wasn't a lot of rhyme or reason a lot of times to what he was doing. I didn't feel like he got into his playbook too often. It's like he had like the first three pages of his playbook. Exactly. And he's like, this is where we're going to stay. And then like every like, once in well, a while, you see him dip into it. What was, your goal? Go what was his goal from game to game, game to game? I know. I mean, scoring points is an easy thing to say, but what was your goal for each matchup that you got? Because I think there was times that you could have been a little more aggressive with throwing the ball. And then there was times that you should have been a lot more aggressive running the ball. And I don't think that he really knew what his goal was from game to game. That's, wonder, and that was from not having a ton of time being a play caller. I don't I think he wonder, always was in a great rhythm. I almost wonder how much um, Levy heard Oklahoma fans for so long with just Lincoln Riley talk about the problem or at least a problem on defense is because the offense moves too fast. And at times you could tell he would try to slow it down and it just wasn't working. And I wonder how much he heard of all of that and was like, I'm going to slow the offense down. I'm going to give my defense a break. And it's like, we did, we weren't built to There's run slow. Like, in there. like, I don't know. I, 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 I feel like he had to be a part of it. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Um, I got tired of saying if I'm not getting to you guys if I'm not getting to you guys as uh comments in here is because there's a bunch of you. We've got over 200 guys in the stream right now. So thank you guys for all coming. I hope everybody has hit that like button. Um pretty good stuff. Look, we're we're gonna find out what happens, but I agree. I, I think that Levy Levy still had he needed I think he did a great job at times, and there was times that he didn't, right? If he would have just done less just je Jeff jet sweeps, I want to keep saying Jeff sweeps for something. If he would have done the jet, jet, jet sweeps, it'd be good. Add the vertical element to it. Add the vertical element to it. You know, maybe fake the jet sweep once and, and throw Brennan Thompson deep. Yeah, yeah. Or put Brennan Thompson <laughs> in for the jet sweep, man. Like, yeah. somebody else <laughs> Freeman. Because every time you saw Gavin Freeman come in, you're like, well, there's a jet sweep coming. There's jet sweep and it ain't doing nothing. <laughs> yeah. Do man, I, do you know, I it was every Levy defense coordinator's dream make, when they saw him come in. I think he's going to make them better. I don't know how much I don't know how much better they can really be with Blake Shapin being their quarterback. Um, but I but, but yes, I think that I think so. I think that what they needed, I mean, the fact that that guy changed that offense when he didn't have to, like I mean, he got himself fired in one year because he won the guy. Look, in order to at places like Mississippi State, even with the NIL, mm -hmm. even with the money you're about to make with with the college football playoff, you've got to have an offense that can put people in jeopardy because you're not going to stop anybody. 
if you're Mississippi it's State, freaking then. Mississippi State. It's just like how I feel about Mizzou. They're going to be half-assed most of the time, but if you can get an offense going that you know can go up and down the field with people, think about when Ole Miss. It was the same thing with Ole Miss. They were able to to beat Alabama the couple of times that they did because they had explosive offenses with Hugh Freeze. That's what they did. You've got to do stuff like that, though, and running that. Look, we know that the air raid is a great equalizer when it comes to talent. Mike Leach was winning at places that they don't win. I, I do believe that it'll be better. I think that they'll be better than they were. I don't know how great he's going to be as far because I don't know how great you can recruit there. I don't know. That they, I don't see them winning the SEC or winning a Natty. If you're asking me that, are they better than they were last year? Yeah, probably. Mississippi State. I mean, they're not like you said. They're not going to win a national championship. They're not going to win an SEC championship. But they can be competitive at, at that program. Uh, Dan Mullen had that program at the ceiling. I think the problem is. is I think the problem is Selman's got to give Jeff Lebby four or five years. And the reason why I say that is yeah. you have to give Jeff Lebby the ability to actually if like you can win these... eight games a year. You're doing great there. Well, you, you know what? Get a better job if you win eight games a year. All Jeff Lebby has to do is go find the Caden Woolards of the world. That's all he's got to do. He's got to go find these undervalued, underrated players and develop them and get the most out of them. If he can do that, he'll get this program winning nine, 10 games a year. But he's got to be able to do that first, and that's going to take a lot of time to build a roster full of that many kids. Here's a good subject. Mm -hmm. Canick to running back for a 2-3 back big package. We were actually talking about that earlier. That's what. Listen, I wouldn't have a problem with it. I wouldn't have a problem with it. Mm -mm. Yeah, Jason. But but here's the other thing. I think that the tempo – I think that tempo's great. Sometimes, but what the problem is with tempo teams is that they they don't really change tempo that much. And I agree with what with Dapo saying here. It puts you in a bad position defensively when you're always tempo. Because even because if you're scoring right away or if you're going three and out and, you know, it only took a minute off the clock, you got your defense on the field an awful lot. I think that was half the problem with Lincoln Riley's defense is while he was here. Sure. Because he had players. At, if you watched them last year at, at USC, uh-huh. you cannot tell. They didn't have – they had guys there to play defense. They just didn't get it done. Now, you can blame all that on Alex Grinch if you want to. I, I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that there were – even when they were doing really well, they were scoring quickly. And so if you're only taking a minute uh-huh. off the clock, even if you scored a touchdown, it's still not great for you. You know what I mean? If you're not taking any time off the clock, there has to be times that you can run and get the clock running. I want to see them run the ball more and put and make more of a concerted effort to run the football more. And I think that you probably see that with Seth. I don't know that you're going to see quite yeah. as much tempo here. I think it'll be more balanced. I think a lot of it happens to be just, I think you got to get a, just a good running back duo that can consistently stay healthy is the problem. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, though, so Jace, yeah, I was that's what I was saying, Jay. I think that I think that you're gonna see more of that with him as well. I I, I really feel like less tempo, more, you know, let's run the ball. And look, you want to attack them, you want to score, you want to be explosive, but I think that you athletes on defense kills tempo. Yeah, it can. It, uh-huh. Right. But most, but you would agree with what I'm saying is a lot of times with tempo guys, they don't know the other speed. You either go that speed or you don't go any speed. And that's what we saw with, mm-hmm. with, with Levy for sure. I think Levy, though, he really wanted to try. I think the problem was he just didn't have running backs that were consistently healthy enough to be able to have that consistent running game. Yeah. Yep. I mean, look at it. Alabama. When they had Tua and them, they could control the clock, and then they could move really quickly. You just got to have those mm-hmm. good backs. 
Yeah. Which I think we have. I think we have. I think this year we have that. Even if like a Javante Barnes goes out with the foot injury, I think we have enough guys to do that. Yeah. Yep. Chicken but also at the same time, though, if someone's going to give you an open field to take take it to the house, I mean, you got to take it. You can't just. Hey, uh, look, yeah, that's yeah. not what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I'm just saying that, you know, deliberate is OK. A huddle every once in a while doesn't hurt anybody. You know, yeah, and, the Oklahoma huddle. I might puke. <laughs> I haven't seen that one. I remember last time I seen Oklahoma huddle like that. the other thing. But what here's what I would say <laughs> with, the, with the with the headset situation. I don't know that you need to get up on the ball and snap it right away because you might be able to get, you know, because they're not going to turn off that headset until 15 seconds. So if you get a look, then Latrell can be in Jeff ear and say, "Hey, look at look at what you're seeing here, or whatever." until it gets to 15 seconds. How often did they let it get to 15 seconds last year? Okay, so how okay, so explain the new headset thing to me. So they turn like the headset has to go off at 15 seconds or they can't talk. It goes off at 15 seconds or yeah. Yeah, it goes off at 15 seconds or on the snap. Depending on what comes first. Ah. Uh, so it, this is not something to where they can communicate um audibles at the last minute. Like it's right. What are we talking about here uh, again? Tyler, you gonna come in here talking smack still? <laughs> Levy wanted to end the season so he could head on out. I don't know about that. I well, I don't know how. I don't know how soon he was in contention for that job. I think they knew pretty early on that they were done, or that I mean they fired. They fired the head coach before the Egg Bowl, didn't they? Who? The other coach. Uh, Zach Bob Arnett, Sell. he wasn't meant to stay in that job was the problem, and Zach Arnett knew that. Right. That I mean, the thing they is... They even had a couple of games left before... That when they firing fired. was not... Like, that was not an unexpected firing. Everybody knew that was coming. Mm -hmm. In well, fact, you guys, I almost wonder if Zach Arnett did well if they would have kept him. Yeah, I think that the headset it could be helpful. It could be very helpful there. That's what I think. I, you know, and then that mm -hmm. also though that would that would give you not you don't have to go so fast if you could maybe get up there and take a look at what you're seeing. Yeah, you know, know, now I see what maybe people now I can see how a true freshman might succeed more now in a situation. I totally didn't think about this when we were talking about um, Michael Hawkins, but you put a true freshman out there. And they can communicate with their offensive coordinator up to the 15 second mark. That might help them out a lot more. So uh, I didn't Rick, think about that. You're, you're that's, assuming that's actually, they have a they have a bad offensive line. They don't have a bad offensive line. They have a new offensive line. That doesn't make it bad. Who said we had a bad offensive line? Richard Shear. Too tough a schedule. Weakness. Offensive line. I bet, anybody heard how I, I bet this is the top five offensive line by the end of the year. It's pretty early. Yeah. Look, they've got guys, and they've got the best offensive line coach in the country. Yeah. And when so, I say top five, I mean top five in the SEC, not like top five in the country, but top, top five in the SEC for sure. Has um, anybody heard how uh, Everett is? I know uh, he got a little dinged up. Camp. I haven't heard. I haven't heard it. I know he didn't play in the scrimmage. He'll be back. Know for how bad it is. I'm sure he'll be fine. But also think that, they, you know, Joshua Bates is also another one of those guys that's going to be really good at center. You know, big, another mm -hmm. big kid, 300 pounder. We'll see. So, he, he chooses hey, Jason, violent. You know, you know like, like last year when I, when, uh, you and I, first became friends and I was telling you about Okoye before he came to you. I get mm -hmm. I get to do the same thing this year. I'll be I'll be uh reporting to you like I did with uh Okoye, CJ Nixon. Um, CJ Nixon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you well you've already seen Kevin Sperry too. You know about him. When at least nine. Let's see. Jay. Yeah I've seen Sperry and uh X Rob. But yeah, Weather Weatherford's about an hour and a half from me, so I'll get to go watch some. What's your PJ? Uh, what's your thoughts on CJ Nixon? 
Is he going to play basketball or is he going to play football? Weather for days. <laughs> that, that's my <laughs> thought. <problem>. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's the problem. He's, he's really good at both. Which one's he going to do? Which one does he want to play? Um, mm-hmm. That's the question I got too, <laughs> guys. We got over two hundred people watching. Yeah. Only twenty five likes. Come on now. Yeah, is he like your feet as you come in this house? Make sure you get in there and take a look at that. Uh, let's see what do we got. It here? probably wouldn't hurt him to play basketball because Porter Moser's been dropping them like flies. <laughs> that's that's an interesting situation this year for the basketball because there's three guys that are originally from the state of Oklahoma yeah. that are all in the transfer portal. Obviously, the best one I can't think of his name, the one from Oklahoma State, probably will end up at Kansas. But if you can land the kid from Drake and the kid from Virginia, Oklahoma's team might not be that bad next year yeah so you've got i mean look you're still continuing to get a lot of these guys that are you know have oklahoma high on their list i was looking at um trent wilson he's got him in their top four he's got ou in his in the top four uh and right now his number one has been penn state i don't know that you can't beat penn state out or that's who everybody's been predicting is penn state up until this point ohio state's also in there in the mix as well, For along with one? what A and M, I think in in th- uh, Trent Wilson. Oh yeah, I, I I'll I'll just say this: I really like Oklahoma and Trent Wilson. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he looks like a stud as well. Michael Fasusi, yes. Um, same thing with um. Apparently, Will Conroy, he's going to be in town on April tenth. There's another four star offensive lineman there too. So, yes, Sooner Cowboys, guys, thank you for acknowledging I'm the only one on the Michael Fasusi Island right now. I don't think that you're the only I, I think I agree with you. I've been agreeing with you on that for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know that, I mean, whatever. I mean, of course, Texas people were wanting him to be at Texas. They wanted, you know, they wouldn't tell you that now, but, uh, you know, they were hoping that they were going to get Tory Blaylock too. Oh, I'll, I love the punk like right there. I love the Tory. Blaylock pump fake there in the uh, the whole deal. Uh, I've that, said this that was times. the perfect throw. <laughs> yeah, I've said this multiple times, and if you guys watched the Michael Fasusi interview, you heard it, but it was specifically stated that everybody's really high on him with Texas right now because he's been to Texas a couple times. He's talked about Texas. His family loves Texas, but he is nowhere near to making a decision. And in fact, he really likes Missouri. So if I had to say there was any team uh, that was really like rivalry, rival, being a rival for Oklahoma right now in this recruitment, it's probably Missouri. I'm about that's to freaking mute you and really kick your like. ass out of here if you continue with this line of talk. I'm just saying I'm repeating what's going on and what's being talked about. This now, man really press- likes Missouri. PG, don't do this. <laughs> do not make me boot you for the – Talking stuff about Mizzou. Mizzou. Do you want me to not mention Mizzou. it? Like, do you not want me to mention that Missouri is like actually chasing him uh, and he actually likes Missouri back? Because it's the truth. I mean, the, it might be hard to hear. It. It. Let me yeah, tell at you. At some when point, they're going to have to like to throw top up twenty in recruiting before I give a shit. I'm just saying it made me want to throw up when he was saying it, but he really likes Missouri. They're hey, I would think they're higher Mr. on the list. Than Texas. Welcome in. Welcome into the show, Mr. Powers. Glad to, glad yeah, to welcome, Mr. Powers. Wait, is this the dad or is this the this son? Is, this is, yes, this is dad. It says it right there. I'm on the screen. Reggie, yes, he, he'll, he'll understand why I'm saying that. He'll, Pops. he'll understand why. Pops. He'll, there's an inside joke there. He'll get it. Okay. Hey, welcome in. Welcome I'm in. Glad a, to see I'm a little nervous this week. I got my a big time guest coming up on to my show, Jason, and I don't know if I'm going to be a hero or a zero. Because he's not. Yo, you have a drink coming on your show? No. He actually likes Missouri. <laughs> no, <laughs> this. Yeah. No. Uh, I got a Barry Trammell. Kind of I, believe it. When, I believe that he picks Missouri and you know, over Oklahoma well in Texas when I see it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> who, wait, who actually likes Missouri? He's he's talking about uh, Fasusi. I believe that he's going to pick Mizzou over OU in Texas when I see that shit. Listen, Jason, I'm not saying he's going to pick Missouri over Texas and Oklahoma. I'm just saying 
if everybody wants to say that he likes Texas because he's talked about Texas and he's been there, well, you can say the same thing about Missouri. He's been there two or three times since his last visit to Oklahoma, and he talks about Missouri more than Texas. So, okay. well, yeah. And the other thing is, these guys troll the shit out of everybody all the time. Look at look at David Stone. He trolled Oklahoma fans the entire last David year. Stone had way too much fun with that recruitment, and he loved that it. Was yeah, awesome. And I and I actually liked it. This living and dying off of every kid and what they decide is insanity to me. You know, it's insanity to me. Besides, and a lot of times, it's like I, I wanted to go back to what that guy was saying about. Oh, you not recruiting a top ten receiver except for one in the last few years or whatever, and that yeah, who said they're that? recruiting bad? It's a guy in my comment section. You blocked his ass, right? I didn't block it, but I did give him a, a, a little bit of a scold. I was just said, "Dude, wait, hold on. What's the wait? Was his name? Uh, oh, what's that guy that comments on my shit all the time? Yeah. There's some troll that joins my shit all the time. I don't know if it's the same person. Um, um, oh, name gosh, was, Topher was in here. He could tell you because Topher is like obsessed with this guy. I can tell you in a second. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what his name is. I didn't oh. kick him, so I know it's here. Darius. Okay, no, that's not the guy. Darius Sweet. No. What about the receivers? We haven't had one of them, and oh yeah, it's bad. It is a bad, and I was just like, "Dude, what are you talking about, man?" They got the deepest receiving class or deepest receiving room, probably in America. That they, they're fine, and but I don't look as much at stars as, and especially now these days. The more that you look into the, what they get right, offensive linemen they struggle with offensive linemen, no matter what. All the recruiting services do. the 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 data is there that says. That's the ones that these recruiting services miss on more than anybody else. I'm going to trust Bill Biedenboe and his eye for talent and what he can turn them into a lot more than I'm going to trust Shannon Terry's boys, any of them, you know, mm -hmm. any of them. And a lot of it, I also think when it comes to think about Nigel Smith, you can tell me that the dude is the same size essentially as Stoney. And had he went to Ohio State, you know, he's a five star. Because you know, Nigel yeah. Smith was almost a five star, and the thing is, the Larry kid Johnson, didn't camp, the kid Johnson doesn't camp and stuff. 15 first team All Americans, and when he recruits a guy, they pretty much make him a five star. At the beginning of the 2024 cycle, I believe Nigel Smith was in the 30 to 40 range, if I remember correctly. He was pretty much five star, and then of course, you know, he did, he just didn't attend camps, which not a lot of kids do. Which, to be honest, those are the best kids because they go under the radar. Hey, look at there, sipping sooner. What's up, man? Hey, Brinsky. Good to see you. And Brinsky and sipping sooner, man. We got all the cool, sipping the cool kids showed up tonight. What up? What up? What up? I mean, yeah, chicken uh, just like Trammell said that he doesn't. Yeah, Barry Trammell was, uh, and he seemed to <laughs> certainly paint a bit of a a bit of a gloomy picture on Feinbaum, didn't he? Barry Trammell. Yeah. yeah. And the professor's here too. What's now, up? Granted, 220 people in here. Now, All right, let's hit the like button. Let's go. Yeah. Go ahead. The the biggest reason I the, the biggest reason I got Tram coming on the show is we're going to be discussing the 73, 74, and 75 uh time with the probation. I know a lot of people do not like Barry Trammell. I'm not one of those people. I think as a columnist, it's your job to have an opinion. And you may not always like his, but it, it's not his job to be make anybody happy with what his opinion is. Oh, so you mean like my opinion with Missouri? I mean, you're not a columnist for the last 50 years there. <laughs> but, you know, if the shoe fits, okay. <laughs> All right, so let's, I mean, yeah. All right, let's just move off Missouri talk because chicken wants Missouri's to trash, bro. Missouri's trash. I'm a, that's my opinion there. Everybody so. said that last year, too. I'm saying everybody said it last year, too. I, I just, here's my deal. I don't want Oklahoma themselves. I, I don't think the fans are going to overlook it. I don't want Oklahoma, because I was thinking I was telling um, you earlier this, I think I was telling you this earlier, you this earlier, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know it's is, one page. 
<laughs> the deal is we have to play that game right before Alabama and LSU. There yeah. might be a part of Oklahoma that hears all this talk about the history of Oklahoma and Missouri. It may be, Maybe they don't get it. Like, what if that game's at 11 o'clock? What if they don't get up for that game? Like, that's my fear. That is my worry. Because it's before Bama and LSU. There's a chance these kids might be focused on those two games. I don't want that to happen. I don't think that that's the one. But that's not really what you're seeing a lot out of. in the Missouri game, I mean, this set up to where they should, they should be in a good position to go ahead and win it. And they should be overlooking anybody. The thing mm-hmm. is, they've talked so much. They talk so much shit to to Tennessee. They talk. All they do is talk in Columbia, Missouri, right now. Oh, I know talk, talk, that, talk, that 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 fan base found a renewed passion for their football. Don't think for one second that that isn't all over the Switzer Center the entire week leading up to that game. All the shit that's been said over the last year, because you know it will be. You know it will be. Piss them off. Let them get that ass beat. I love it. Okay. So I got a question. So obviously, I feel like we're all in consensus. We're rooting for LSU to beat USC, right? We're all LSU fans. We're all LSU fans that night. Okay. Yep. What fans Mm -hmm. are we on Saturday, October 5th? Are we A&M fans or are we Missouri fans? Because they play each other. (laughs) What what fans are we? Can they both lose? (laughs) Can they both lose? Yeah, that's one of those. Yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> can they both lose? But I think that see, there's the, the for them to win ten games. For them to win ten games this year, you got to assume that they're going to beat A and M. I wouldn't assume that. I wouldn't assume that. I yeah, think that A and M got better when they, they got rid better. of freaking Jimbo. I think they got better. Right? Okay, yeah, I mean it's at A and M. It's a tough game, but like, so they play. Right. Okay, so they play Murray State, Buffalo, Boston College, and Vandy. That should be four wins, right? I think we're pretty assumption that's four wins should right there be. in a row. And then they oh, let's is say they lose to A and M. Yeah, so they lose okay. to A and M. They have to go, which which is so weird. They have to go to UMass. Yeah, but uh, I don't they're care about, to about they're they're in conference games that I can see them. All you got to do is lose three, and you don't win ten. Okay, okay, no, but their schedule is really easy though. Okay, so so they so I mean they're going to win. They got to play Oklahoma, and they got to play Alabama, okay, and they got to okay, play. Okay, Alabama, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Here, here, so hear me out. So five and one. Let Auburn at home. I mean, is Auburn going to be that good next year? Are we sold? Auburn's not on the same tier as Missouri. Not really. Not really. And, well, and, since, it's, and since it's in Columbia, yeah, wait, you, wait, wait, wait. Not on the same tier as Missouri. Yeah, I think they're on the same tier as Missouri. No, yeah, that's no, no. That's what I meant. That that they're on the same tier. So I mean, yeah. since it's in Columbia, they could lose, the they could lose that game. Yeah, but I mean, I let's just say we but let's but let's give it to Mizzou since it's at home. Who's right? a better coach though? Who's a better coach though? Drink or freeze? Don't you say drink or it's you're definitely gone. Definitely freeze, but I don't <laughs> think freeze has the, the freeze don't have a damn quarterback. <laughs> you freeze don't have a quarterback. That's my oh, concern okay. with Auburn too. The, I can, the, I can see the winning. All I'm saying is, that would it really surprise you if they lost that game? I'm not saying that. No, it wouldn't lose, surprise me. But they're gonna, the they're not going to win. But would it really surprise you? No, it wouldn't surprise me. But for the sake of argument, let's give it to them because we're because let's say they lose at Bama, and they lose to Oklahoma, but their last three games of the season is at South Carolina, at Mississippi State, and Arkansas. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the easiest okay. three game stretch you've ever seen in your life. In There's the another. Hold on, though. Hold on, though. Arkansas got them a quarterback, and they've got – they did get them a – coach by then. Brother, hold Sam on Pittman is going to be fired. Hold on. Sam Pittman is – that doesn't matter because guess who will be the head coach then and is already going to be coaching this quarterback? Bobby Petrino. Bobby <laughs> Petrino. <laughs> yeah. You don't think that Bobby Petrino is a better coach than Drink? I don't know. I do. no. <laughs> Shit. Come on, man. Come on, you can't man. tell me that dumpster fire. Is <laughs> that, is, that is a freaking – that's a rivalry for them. That's a rivalry game. It matters no, to them. And Grace been talking fire. shit to them and posting – even put up a freaking billboard in like in the middle of the state. Shit, about only $36 for that game. I think we should go just for the fucking shits and giggles that that game's going to be. It could be fun. It could be fun, but I'm just telling you. <laughs> yeah, I would not be surprised. Again, 
Would it surprise me if Mizzou won? No. But it okay. wouldn't surprise me if they lost. <laughs> Here's the deal. Let's just say they only beat Murray State, Buffalo, Boston College, Vandy, UMass, at South Carolina. Hey, not, Robert State, that's crazy. still eight wins. And one. You're insanity. I didn't say 11-1. and one. Never said no, that. No, no. I'm talking about Robert Shear. Go ahead. Continue. That's still eight games that they just win those games and lose to A&M, Auburn, Bama, and Oklahoma. Yeah, is which, Ed, a, which are you a Mizzou fan there, Sheer? No, I'm talking about Robert Sheer now. <laughs> I'm going to continue saying mid zoo because they are mid at best. Hey, if they win seven eight games, if they win seven eight games, is that mid for Missouri or is that good for Missouri? Because last year, I think you call that special. They got lucky, man. Last year was special. They got lucky. They had a freaking they they played the third string quarter. They were losing in the fourth quarter against the third string quarterback from Ohio State. Arkansas versus Missouri is okay. Yeah, I can see it. Great value, Bedlam. I can see it happen. I can see it working out. That is bad because eight and four is probably a very realistic record. Sharp. It's probably for, for Mizzou. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just, I mean, looking at their schedule, eight wins is, I mean, if they don't win eight games. Look, I, I got, a hell of a lot more, might have to go. got a hell of a lot more trust in them winning eight than I got them winning freaking 10 or 11. Okay, I mean, mm-hmm. I'm not saying they're going to win 10, but like nine games is not out of the stretch for Missouri. I mean, if they win, if, if, if they have eight. Bet the nine, under there, Rich. Bet the under. <laughs> yes, chicken. I live in Oklahoma. I live in Mustang, actually. Thank you very much. I I, I know you want to roast me, but yeah, this is another guy. Hey, good. I like this rhyming lemon. Ms. Uh, yeah. Chokes like the cowpokes. Look, this is a good question. With Oklahoma State now, no more Texas or OU in the in the league. That should be theirs to win, and they just not. Have you seen old Gundy? Just grinning and thinking he's cock of the walk. I bet you they don't even play in the Big 12 championship game this year. He Who wants to bet. Dude, wants I, to bet? I agree with you on that. And the no. sad part is, it's funny. I was talking to, was it Ty or Jay? Sharpshooter trying to get booted out of here. <laughs> I don't remember who it was. I, I think it, it was it was either Ty or Jay, I think. And we were talking about the Big 12 because Oklahoma State's dead last in recruiting right now. And I said, there's a good chance Kansas, Kansas of all teams, might win a conference championship before Oklahoma State. I, I think that, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's that, we're to that point. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I think that I think that Kansas oh, probably is better than yeah. Oklahoma Have you seen State. the quarterback that they got? If, for if Jalen Daniels title? is healthy, if Jalen Daniels stays healthy, I don't know anybody in that in that league that'll beat them. Have y'all seen oh. the quarterback they got this cycle? David McComb out of Edmond Memorial. LSU and K State. No, uh, LSU. Uh-uh. Oh, what are we talking about here, Richard? Here are two surprises: LSU and K State. They lost to LSU, bro. Mid do mid mid zoo lost to LSU. Man, and I, was, I, I will say though, did you watch that game last year? Did you watch that game last year? That was very, uh, that was a fun game. That was a fun game. Yeah, only because LSU had the worst defensive coordinator in the country. I, I I'll say though that uh, I watched that Georgia Missouri game too. That was a fun game too. I'm not sure. I'm not watching sure. Georgia, I'm not watching Georgia, watching Georgia sweat a little bit <laughs> to Missouri was that one was a lot of fun. That brought me some enjoyment. Yeah, so a lot of people are a little pissed at Barry, I guess, this week. You know, a little pissed at Barry. I agree with Rhyming Lemon up here. Hundred dollars, yeah. Colorado beats Oklahoma State. I'd take that. A hundred dollars, Colorado beats Oklahoma State all day. I think they do too. Yeah, they got a much Hold better on, quarterback. They, they got a much better quarterback. That wouldn't surprise uh, me. Hold on, do they hey, actually play each other this year? Is one of the best players in the country, guaranteed day one. Hold on. Does does Colorado play Oklahoma State this year? They believe they do. Because I've never been to Stillwater, but I will show up for that game. Yeah, yeah, at uh, Stillwater. 
They are playing them in Stillwater. Yeah. Oh, oh, Jason, we got to go. Yeah, and they also that. have. They also have. Uh, they're also playing. They're lucky that they get Utah at home as well, but I think the Utah kicks their ass too. Oh no, they have to go to Colorado. Oh well, they're definitely going to get beat then. Jason, you want to go to that game? Hell yeah, let's go. It's, oh, it's in Boulder. Oh, okay. It's in Boulder, dude. Let's I'll go. Go. Like, hell yeah. Let's go. It might be tough to get a ticket, but yeah, it probably fun. will be tough to get a ticket. And I don't have a buddy there anymore. I've been so. to Folsom Field three or four times. We can see if uh we can see about our, our boy uh Dave might be able to hook us up there. Depends on how good they are at the end of the at that what time of the year are they playing them? It's gonna be the last game of the of the season eleven twenty nine. Oh, yeah. Which is Oklahoma LSU, but I think Chicken was oh, watching. No. Well, I, I'm already, here. I'm already in. I'm already going to be in. I ain't going to Baton Rouge. Fuck that shit. I am going to Baton Rouge. I'm no, fuck sure. that. I ain't. The, those fans are terrible. I ain't got. I, I, I ain't going to go in the eight o'clock game, sure. and we have to go sit with all those LSU fans. So Oki Light gets beat by K State. I think they probably lose to BYU. OSU loses to Arkansas. Do they go to BYU? They do. Mm -hmm. But I don't think BYU is going to be Arkansas is going to go on the road and beat Oklahoma State, but they're not going to go on the road. They're not going to go on the road and beat Midzu. Come on. Come on. Okay. Okay. (laughs) They definitely lose to Utah. (laughs) They definitely lose to Utah. They're losing to K State. That's two Uh losses. They lose to Colorado. That's three. I don't know if they. Beat BYU or not? That BYU BYU team is just bad. Yeah, they should. They should. BYU but is gonna just say, bad. Oh, yeah, is going to fall on their face. You know, Oki Light, Oki Light will fall on their face. However, though, it will also would not shock me to see Mike Gundy win nine games, nine or ten games. That wouldn't shock me either, because that's just, just the most Mike know. Gundy thing. You just never know. <laughs> No, but they have the expectations to this year. He doesn't do great with expectations. I'm not gonna lie; like, I feel TCU's like TCU's gonna be better. TCU's gonna be better than they were a year ago, and they didn't have to play them, so they wouldn't know. But hell, K State beats them. West Virginia, hey, West Virginia was pretty good last year. They're gonna be better. I mean, do they win at the Tulsa? Huh? Do they win at Tulsa? Good question. Good question. Probably, yeah. But they should if they don't. That would be hilarious. Man, oh, they're, no. I'm not going to lie, though. Oklahoma State's got a tough schedule. So they got Utah at home, Arkansas at home, at K-State, at BYU, at Baylor, at TCU, and at Colorado. Yeah. That, look, I don't I don't think they play for the conference championship game. Uh, no, be, y'all be nice to my Arizona. boy, man. Be y'all like, be nice to our uh, boy, PG. It'll be Utah, Arizona, K State. I don't think Colorado's good enough to play for it this year. Um, I don't think the Colorado's going to, except, except that they have at least top two quarterback in that league right now. He's it really just depends on the their country. offensive if line. All they have to do, all they have to do, is be a little better on the offensive line. It's not like they're playing in the SEC. Yeah, Colorado I mean, that's, can be a problem. They can be a problem. Arizona's going to be a problem. They don't have to play Arizona. In, in I just need to see it. I, for for Colorado, I, I I need to see the offensive line get that be, get that much better. You know, because it's yeah. not like they have. Well, they got an offensive coach. line coach from Oklahoma. Yeah, but so, it's not you know, and and they've recruited it pretty well. It sounds like we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, Jordan Seaton's going to be really good for him, but I mean, the other guy. Mm-hmm. If they come out and their offensive line looks really good, the first four games yeah like i think we're talking about colorado potentially playing for it i don't six and six is a good expectation richard had it in the chat six and six is a good expectation for colorado oh look at what just happened here prinsky goes into timeout talking (laughs) silly shit said missouri is gonna beat oklahoma 42 to 7 Oh, that's that's the time now. It's just got to happen. That is that is that, that sounds like a nightmare. That sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> well, it's, uh, can you imagine? It's, like, let's let's put ourselves in a world for a second where Missouri just beats Oklahoma. Not even like beat them that bad. Let's just say they beat Oklahoma. Let's put ourselves in a Twitter world where that happens. Are you trying to get a timeout too? 
no, I am not trying to get time out. <laughs> I'm just trying to put the importance of why Oklahoma needs to win that game. Ah, yeah. <laughs> activate my damn Twitter account. Richard Shear, buddy, not happening. Yeah, next got to stay <laughs> freaking the riot. There's no way. Hey, look, here's the deal. The, if their defense, I think that the reason that they were fairly good last year, I'm going to give them that. I'm not giving them much more than that, but I'm going to give them that. Their defense was pretty good. They lost their two, three best defensive coaches to LSU who they couldn't beat, you know, and they lost a lot of guys off of that defense too. It's a new defense. If your offense isn't, and if Oklahoma's defense is as good as we think it is, you're not going to go out there and score a bunch of points just like you did in against Ohio State. Are we still talking you want a lot of guys out. You're going to have to you, – you think you're going to get into a shootout and, and win with Oklahoma? You're not. It's not going to work. Are we still talking about Missouri? Yeah, we're talking about oh, they Missouri. They ain't winning a shootout Oklahoma. with Oklahoma. That ain't no way. It's not going to be a shootout. I, I will say, though, I think the thing that really determines how Missouri is going to do this season, it's going to be their running game because that's what they were. Cody Schrader had like 1,600 yards last year. So, like, their running game also, yeah, that they don't. That's I that's don't the thing. On, how are they going to replace Cody? For, you think it'll be 24 21? I don't think that you guys get to 21. <laughs> I don't think you do. <laughs> I, I think it just depends on how good this Oklahoma defense is supposed to be this year. I think so, too. I think so too, but uh, I think they're going to shut them down. Is, hey, I, you I know what? Give... Go ahead. Go ahead, Preston. Oh. Oh, okay. Um, I was just going to say. I, I was just, I was just going to say I'm going to be on the Missouri game itself. I I know we're going to win it, but how by how much? Almost. I'll tell you after the tech. I'll tell you. We could. After the, I think, uh, win. I, I think they win by at least when we'll see at least two touchdowns. I've got them by at least two touchdowns. I could see Oklahoma or I could see Missouri getting twenty one just because they're returning their quarterback this year, Brady Cook, and he was sixty six percent completion percentage last year, and they they're returning a hell of a running back. That they and they're returning Luther anymore. Burden. They also have a hell of a running back that they don't have anymore. Well, yes. That's gonna be the big. That's gonna be the big de facto. It looks like they're. I'm looking at their transfer portal class. It looks like they're bringing in two transfer portal running backs. Yay. we'll see. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I it's Luther Burden. That, I like that, Luther Burden. I think that Luther Burden is probably at least one of the one of the best receivers in the country, no doubt. Have you um, did you see some of the guys they got in their transfer portal class? There's some guys in here I didn't know that they had. And Theo Weiss, too. Yeah, Theo's. Did Theo's you see they got Drew Pine? Huh? Did you see that Missouri got Drew Pine this year? I did see that. I didn't know that until just now. Yeah, he's been riding the pine for a couple of years, so who cares? What a, what a, <laughs> what a world we live in. You know, I've always, I've, I've witnessed. I'm going. I'll be calm. I'll be look. I, if I think we're gonna lose, the games that I can see them losing would be Ole Miss, LSU, Bama. That Ole Miss games are scary. I think I think we should beat Ole Miss, but that game is kind of scary. It is a scary game. They they're good at home too. Although, but I also I still kind of look at them fairly yeah. similar that I look to some of these other programs. Is that look. The next time that Lane beats somebody good will be the first time. Did you hear my comparison with Ole Miss earlier? But your Ole Miss I, comparison? No. Yeah, I said Ole Miss reminds me of like the really good TCU teams that we would play. That's what Ole Miss reminds me of. You know, the teams that'd be ranked in top ten, they'd be good on like they'd be decent on or okay, no, they'd be good on defense. Decent on offense, just flip it with Ole Miss. Good on offense, decent on defense. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what they kind of remind me of. Which, I mean, yeah. Oklahoma, well, I think, I think games, but Oklahoma won them. A, a, a tough home game, but I think they win the game. I don't seem to have – I don't worry about them winning a home game, you know, against Josh. I think that – I think that, that that Tennessee – I think that they're right there, though, with, with teams like Ole Miss. I, I – Really, to me, 
Yeah, Oklahoma has one of the tougher schedules in the country. There's no doubt about it. There's nobody that's got a tougher schedule than Florida. But Oklahoma Florida got they got into the Billy Napier should have just fucking quit. Like I don't know why he's still if there. If he wins, if he wins eight games, they ought to build a statue for his ass. If dude, if, okay, yeah. If Florida wins, let's say Florida wins nine games, do they have a argument to get into the playoffs? At, at, with that with schedule, that schedule I mean, nine games, I, they'd have an argument because that's got to be one of the tougher schedules we've seen in college football history. Yeah. That, that, yeah. That's <clears throat> I, it's. A, I've never seen a schedule like that before. Yeah, I mean, so that's the thing. If they win never. nine games, because they have to play. Yeah, Miami. they open. They open with Miami, right? Yep, they get Miami, A yeah. and M. At and Tennessee. Miami's like expected to win nine or ten games. Yeah, so they get but Miami, early believe that at shit, but Tennessee, you know. Georgia, at Texas, LSU, Ole Miss, and at Florida State. That is eight teams yeah. that yeah. will be ranked in the top twenty-five at some point. Yeah. Eight out of twelve. <laughs> yeah. Shit. So if they win nine games, they're gonna have beat some really good teams. Yeah. Oh yeah. For sure. Man, God, I want that to happen now because that's going to be such that that'd be so fun to oh, have. Billy to say, hey, Billy, Billy will never go away. If that, if that could you happens. imagine the committee nine games? They're, building, they're putting a statue outside. I the will stands. say though, I have heard out of uh, spring ball, Florida, it ain't good. Yeah, here's what I was saying that they get the same schedule yeah. next year, right? Now, Oklahoma's get is supposedly going to be tougher schedule the next year. I think it is just because it's second year of Kalen DeBoer going to Tuscaloosa. I think sure. that game's tougher than LSU. But I'm going to tell yeah. you right now. I'm going to tell you right now that that's a bull. I can't believe the SEC pulled that shit. They didn't need to. It was the laziest move ever. What to flip just the schedule? Swap the schedule around. Yeah. I honestly, I Lazy. thought that's what we were going to do from the beginning. I, no, I didn't. No, that's not. They said before that it was going to be you play. Your your rivals or whatever, and then half plays Texas one year, half plays them the next. I mean, are they they're doing just, it because they're going to go to nine games? And they're they doing just it because to- Texas wants to freaking play Vanderbilt and Mississippi State and Florida for two hey, years in a row. I, I I did say this the other day though. Let's say twenty twenty six and twenty twenty seven. Those are probably going to be the years Oklahoma needs to really push for national championship. Because those that's going to be a really easy SEC schedule. Bullshit. Now, I, the more I look at it, the more I'm okay with it as far as Oklahoma is concerned. I think that you get better playing better football teams, and it's the same reason that I think that Oklahoma State's going to eat shit without OU playing mm-hmm. every year. I, I believe that you are screwing with your competitive bound edge when you do that. I really do. But it is what it is. I, I think that I think that it was a lazy move by the SEC and a transparent move by the SEC to try to prop up freaking Texas or whatever damn reason. You know there's a chance Texas loses four or five games this year, right? Yeah, I mean, easy. if they do, if they do, that means that I mean, yeah, I could see them losing Michigan. Really, the only other ones that they should lose are OU and Georgia. Well, I think that at A&M? Game, at, at AM. Okay. So that's four losses right there. All you need to do is find one more. And I said, what's sweeter, them losing to Vanderbilt at Vandy or losing to UTSA? Which They're one would you want? The freaking Vanderbilt. Which one do you want? Come on. It would be cool if it happened, but you know it ain't happening. Hey, Vandy was giving Georgia a run last year for their money. Come on. For the first <laughs> quarter. It. They were over in the league, man. <laughs> for the first yeah, quarter. Yeah, and, and Appalachian. And Appalachian State wasn't supposed to beat Michigan in the big house either, but I digress. <laughs> I wouldn't be that surprised if they lost that game. Uh, I, I mean, if they win eight and four, if they win eight and four, I think that especially with them putting that's a bad look on you, Sark. You go to the freaking playoff, get the cakewalk schedule, and then gag all over yourself and don't win 10. The thing is, I think. That- I don't think this schedule is favorable for them, though, after going to the playoffs. Like, at Michigan's going to be a tough game. And then you got Georgia. Like, I think they lose we'll just see how tough Michigan is. They got a new quarterback, too. They've got – it is – it's at the big house, so, yes. Yep. And 
I mean, defensively, they still got a lot of those guys, and they're going to play the kind of game that probably could hurt Texas. I think Texas, it's be a tough game. Texas got to replace their D line. I think that that's the kind of game that they could lose. I don't think mm-hmm. that Michigan lost as much as you think they did, Sooner Cowboys. Not on defense, they didn't. They lost their quarterback and they lost a lot of guys, but they they've got a lot of guys back. <laughs> Although they lost JJ McCarthy, I think they got an upgrade in JJ. It may not have hurt anything. Yeah, I'm just saying. I think Sean Moore is going to want to have more of an explosive offense. And I think with what they brought in through the transfer portal and getting Jaden Davis, I think they're going to be able to have that explosive offense. So, in fact, you might see a better Michigan team this year. I don't know about better, but I think they're going to be good. Here's the deal. Uh, I I think they're still going to be good. Texas has at least – I think they have at least two losses. You look at those four games, they're losing at least two of them. And it's not out of the world of possibility for them to lose three or four. I don't need. I don't think that it is either. But um, if they uh, wouldn't it be so funny to watch the really movie bad on Sark if they do. It looks really bad on Sark if they do. So are are, uh, are, are we rooting for A and M or are we rooting for Texas? Oh, definitely rooting for A and M. Yeah, A and M. You won't ever. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Listen, I, I don't root for A and M, but I'm rooting for them that day. <laughs> you know. See, we get a lot of fun storylines this year. It'll be fun. It'll be fun to see that. It'd, it'd be even cooler to see Vandy beat him, but I don't see that happening. <laughs> Are you rooting for um, – would would you root for Missouri or would you root for Texas? Mm. And and yeah, you can't Missouri. say it can both teams. I mean, you I mean, you got to pick a winner. I mean, Mizzou, but but it only uh, by a little uh, bit. <laughs> only by a little bit. And, and only because – only because – I know. Yeah, I'm just tired of the uh, Richard Shear's actually a pretty chill Mizzou fan. This is one of the first ones that that you know isn't completely crazy. I get them but in my there, chat all the time. So Telling bad. me Susi and Lamont Rogers are all going to Missouri. Yeah, it's it's bad. Any day that Texas loses an angel gets its wings. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm still torn though on the A and M Missouri game this year because and 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 I want I want to I want to explain my dilemma here. We aren't losing defensive linemen like hotcakes to Missouri. You're losing them like hotcakes to A and M. So right. there's a part of me that really wants to root for Missouri in that game. Because I don't want to the, the the more Texas A&M is bad. Yeah, DJ Hicks. Who did they get since then? Who did they get since then? They didn't since lose who? to him last year. Yeah, we did. We lost, uh, McKinley. But now he's going to LSU, LSU though. Late. You you lost huh? another one really late in the cycle. Yeah. I'm trying to but think who it was. They lost their defensive line coach. I don't know though. I think the Elko, I think overall they're gonna be better. With Elko, oh, now, I still 100%. think they're going to be Texas A and M. I still think they're going to be Texas A and M. I was talking to, uh, I was talking to some recruits that were on campus this weekend with A and M, and these were guys. By the way, let's just preface this: these were guys that were almost going to n- just not visit Texas A and M again because they didn't like Jimbo, but they were giving them another shot because Elko came in, and they said it's a hundred percent different out there. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, that's that's not good. Yeah. <laughs> the guy freaking went and was kicking people's ass at Duke. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, I. You know? I don't, the world Riley, is better when they. He, he had him. Riley Leonard, and I think Riley Leonard's a pretty good quarterback. And had he not gotten hurt, you know, Duke Duke wasn't going to have the depth that they needed to go any further than they probably did. But I think that, you know, that shows you that Elko's a pretty damn good coach. But I still think it's – I think they may be just cursed at Texas A&M also. But they may – hey, listen, the guy got my vote whenever he said that they're the uh, flagship school of, of the state of Texas, like on his second freaking time to talk to the media in College Station. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Dude, I loved it when he said that. So who's worse, A&M or Mizzou fans? Because both fans act like they have won so much and so many championships. Like they both they're, act they're like out there on the cusp. Because I mean, I don't know. Well, A&M's I mean, went bad. The last, went the last bad. Like they really think they, Missouri was in like the fifties or something like that. Was the last time they won the, the, the last. Time. Never the last won. Time yeah, but with A and M fans, last, 
they really act like they have run this conference for God they knows how long. They've never done anything. I no. know, but that's how they Oklahoma's act. Like, Oklahoma's won 17 out of 28 meetings. Last time Missouri won a national championship was the year my brother was born, 1958. Hey, last time who won a national championship? a and Missouri. Missouri. Missouri doesn't have but a, a, a football national title. Yeah, in 1958, they won the national champ. You want, you want me to say- wait? Is wait? Is it a shared national championship? Like, hold on. Wait, who gave them that national championship? Because I'm yeah. going to have to disagree with you. <laughs> it's not. It's not one that they claim. I, I, I seen it. They don't have one. They don't have I'm a looking it up. I'm looking it up. And chicken. Uh, it might be an unclaimed, but it's an unclaimed. I, I was. I was. I was. And I'll give them the price if they're not like freaking Oki Light claiming. You know. Claiming na- national titles in the years that you know the men and all the men were off playing at war, then I'll give them props for that. They've never won an Addy. Uh, and it was 39, that was also during World War II. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you don't claim it. No, see, hey, then I give, you like that. I give you props for that. Why is it saying they won it in 2007? Oh, it- we it's didn't. unclaimed. Neither champion. Uh, it here it is. Here it is right here. Uh, no. 1960 and two set and uh, 2007. But it says here they're unclaimed. So I, I stand corrected, guys. At least, <laughs> at least, they, at least they're not doing the the, 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 the UCF team. or Oki Light thing and claiming a championship that's trash. You know. Didn't Florida win the I national think. championship in the seven? Yeah, for us, yeah, yeah, they beat. Yeah, yeah, they beat us yeah. in the two eight like, in the O eight Orange Bowl. Nineteen sixty was a paper thing. Yeah, no, that I get it. All right, but you know that you are hanging those uh, SEC East banners there in Columbia. I saw that. <laughs> yeah, if it's not if it's not the AP. Which is the national champ? It, it, back in those days, it's not it. Even the UPI, I would give more more love than that. <laughs> the UPI, well, Jason, United Press was A and M is worse than Oki Light. Their their uh, last national their uh, their their national championships are claimed, but. Uh, it was 1919, 1927, and 1939. <laughs> yeah, 39. I think that was their year when uh, – wasn't that when um, – oh, uh, Alabama coach was there. Bear Bryant. I think that was when Bear Bryant uh, was there. 39. Might have been. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it, the, here's the thing: their their winning percentage in the conference, whether it was the Southwest Conference or the Big Big Twelve, or it's or the SEC, it's about the same as it's always been. This is who A and M is. Whether it's Jimbo or RC Slocum or any of those coaches, they just all do about the same. Mike Price, you know, <laughs> except old Mike Price took that seventy-seven nothing one right <laughs> on the chin. <laughs> yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's you oh it's you claiming a championship that happened when all the when all the men were off at war is is pretty funny to me. It's pretty funny to me. Tells you why they really do so. I do think that NIO for Texas AM is attractive, but I also think that um if you use it as the only way that you're going to get a player, kind of like what we're seeing at Missouri too right now, it's not going to be enough. You've got to do, you've get, you have to get the right guys, not just the guys that have the stars. They have to fit you. They have to fit. Good night, fellas. Everyone is going to be in the playoffs. It's spring ball hype. Ah, that's true. You have to win. You have to get the right, you have to get the right guys to win. I don't know how you could be that excited about Missouri's all the the last thing I'm gonna say about Missouri. I don't know how you could be that excited about them and drink when they won five games twice and seven once. I mean, come on. And then he wins eleven. I mean, I see him going closer to that seven 
then I see him getting to 11. It's just me. But see, we'll see, we'll see. It is important that they do. I don't think. Look though, but they've got the same schedule too next year. Yeah, I mean they somehow that somebody loves yeah. them at in uh somebody's loving them in SEC land. Loving them some some drink. We'll see. Well, oops. What'd you say? What did you say? Uh, chicken. College football does not count until after World War II. Yeah. All right, listen, man. If if you, <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure Army won that national title that they're claiming in Okie Lightland. The Army did win a national title. They won the war. They, they won the war, but I think they were national champions in football <laughs> that year too. <laughs> they deserve it. I give it to them. But you know, Okie Light says it's them. I don't know. The men were off at war. That's all I got to say. The, the men were off at war. How are they going to get screwed in number of playoff teams? Nah, I don't agree with that. I, don't, I think they're going to get what they what they deserve. I think I think you're going to get a nine and three. You're probably going to get a nine and three. I think they probably get at minimum three teams in. And I think they're probably. I wouldn't be surprised if they got four. Who? The SEC. I think you see three mm -hmm. SEC, three Big Ten. I th okay, yeah. Well, with the seven and five, it gives them an opportunity. But I think they should get five, you think? I don't know, man. I think you, I understand this argument. And here's what I'm going to tell you. Because when the Big 12 ends up with, they're going to have two teams that have – Watch, you're probably going to end up with one of the conference finalists with three losses. Maybe maybe both of them, but I think you're going to have 10 and, uh, at least they're going to have two losses minimum, both teams that play for the Big 12. So that means then you're going to have at least one team. I mean, yeah, I don't know, man. I you end up with a freaking nine and three conference champion that gets into the playoff over a nine and three team from the SEC. Yeah, you're gonna get people pissed. You're gonna get people pissed. <laughs> Robin, Robin Lim wants the months. over and under Why would you of how many people. Would you... The Big Twelve <laughs> is gonna beat the, each other up. It's the one thing I'll give the Big Twelve is that it's gonna be super competitive. You've got Kansas and Kansas State are both. Kansas, Kansas can be really good. That I think they have one of the best coaches in the country, Lance Leipold. K State's going to be good. <laughs> Oklahoma State should be. Arizona, Utah, BYU. I wouldn't be that surprised. Yeah. <laughs> Chicken, you out of here, man? I'm sorry, good I'm night. laughing, Jason. Talk I'm to laughing. you later. I'll go ahead. We're about we're about there. I, I'm cool with laughs. Laughs are good. Um, <laughs> Ryman Lemon wants to know <clears throat> how many beers at the spring game I'm going to have, and he's taking bets on the over and under. <laughs> on beers? Ooh, let me know what that what that number is because I I'm a, I'll get yeah. in on that. Join a. Uh... Join Jay and I. I bet. I bet we'll go by uh, Michael Patterson McDonald's dad's um, bar down there. there. I'm gonna he be a, there. He has like a he has a like a bar area, like a restaurant thing. Hell yeah! I'm, I'm sure we'll I'm stop by. There. I'm sure I we'll stop wait. by down there while we're down there. That'll be fun. Yep, I'll be there. It's in three weeks too. I can't, Come I out. can't wait. Is the new Big Twelve better than the Big Ten? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hold on. Did you need to fucking put that person in timeout? Gosh. That's shoddy. He's just trying to crash on the Big Ten, and I like him for it. Because <laughs> yeah, I don't like not. the Big Ten. But no, it's not as good. It's not as good. Hold on. It's a lot we get of off of the night. I got to show y'all cuteness overload here. We got. Um, let me show us your dog. Oh, up. puppies. All crashed out in there listening to the. Hey, when's the baby oh. due? While well, I'm playing fucking Mario over here, so 
When's the baby due? Uh, September. Uh, it's either the first week of September or the last two weeks of August. So I am hoping for the last two weeks of August. Do we <laughs> so know what it is? Do we so know, that we don't know believe what we're having. Football season. <laughs> is it going to be a little PG? Uh, and it's going to be a girl. It's going to be a girl. Oh, you're a deep shit now. Oh, wow. I am. <laughs> she better. Is this your first one, PG? It is. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm already telling her she's going to be a great softball player it's and be so playing. Ass. Together, so. It's so ass. She's going to have PG wrapped she's right around that little finger, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm sure she'll is. make appearances on the show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Guys, I got to get out of here too, man. It is what it is. But yes, definitely good luck with that. We're in tr- we're having fun with that. Yeah, this is a great line right here. Boys destroy property, girls destroy your soul. This is true. This is very much true. <laughs> My girls could be destroying those softballs. <laughs> she is going to teach her to hit like hey, man. The softball field. We like your niece then. We like your niece there, Rich. Welcome to the show. I'm glad yep. you showed up, man. We appreciate it. I know we're busting your chops, but hey, you took it pretty well, and I appreciate it. Guys, tell everybody how to find you before we get out of here. Sooner Legend. Hey, Jay, go. I'm going you first. You can find me. Oh. Yeah. Oh, or... <laughs> you go first. You, you go first. <laughs> okay. You can find me at uh, Sooner Legends Podcast. Uh I talk about everything from I just started the new stuff, but I'm more historical, talking about the glory days of the program, uh, some history that goes clean back even to the Ben Owen, Benny Benny Owen area. So uh, y'all tune in. I'm at 235 subs, and I'm looking for 300 by next Sunday. Who's so. that motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> What in the other. cornbread hell? <laughs> Did you hear it? Who's down, yeah. motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> I heard it. <laughs> all right, guys. And PG, tell everybody how to find you too. Listen, I'm pretty sure all these people already watched my shit. <laughs> they know where to find me on YouTube. Awesome, <laughs> Listen, I, I can't talk about the glory days. Because my glory days go all the way back to 2007. That's about when I started watching college football. That's when I was old enough to really start comprehending it. So, <laughs> all righty. Well, he's, it's a great show. You should definitely watch it. I love watching it uh, and hearing more and more about some of the old days of the Sooner stuff. Yeah. Hey, thanks for coming in, Lemon and Richard. Um, so, me and PG in the same boat. Yeah. Hey, listen, it is what it is. But uh, that's, for that's my problem. That's my problem. We figured it out. We figured out why I believe in Missouri so much. When I started watching college football, Missouri was actually good. You got it right, though, about one thing today about Texas. <laughs> finally, you know, a blind squirrel finds a nut. A broken clock is finally right twice a day. Oh, joy <laughs> be that the brand has finally returned. <laughs> F- your brand. Love it. <laughs> We appreciate everybody else coming to the show. Hey, guys, if you haven't already become a subscriber to the Hall of Fame College Football with Jason and the coach, please make sure you hit that subscriber button. Definitely get over and subscribe to both of these channels. We need to get Mike up there um, as well uh, to that, at least to that 500 mark, but we need to, we need to get him going. And look, if you, if you want recruiting news, you'll get a lot more of it from PG than you're going to get here because I, don't, I just don't follow it quite as close. I do, but I follow it by watching PG. Uh, so, yeah, make sure you guys are paying attention to what's going That's on right. there. Do that stuff. Great shows, both of these. Jump in there. Become a member of the Hall of Fame Mafia. Jump into our Discord as well. And, uh, hey, we've got some cool sh- uh, stuff in our official show merchandise. Jump in there. HOFmedia.us slash pod dash merch. And if you would like to save money on your mobile on your mobile service 45 bucks on the largest 5g network in the country for three months that's 15 bucks a month try mintmobile.com slash hof all right guys we appreciate you guys everybody coming in thank you guys for coming in and and joining me on the show we'll see you all on the next one